Well, hello and welcome to the Defining Moments Black Men series of The Authentic Joe Show. It's my pleasure to be here with you, and it's also my pleasure to introduce to you my guest, Soul. How are you today? I was good. How are you doing? Glad to be here. I'm glad to have you. Thank you for being a guest on our show. And would you please tell us a little about yourself, uh, including your name, your background, and how you would describe yourself? Well, my name is Soul. I go by Soul. Uh, I'm a content creator. Uh, most of my information goes out on YouTube, on my channel, Immortal Minds. Uh, that has branched out into several other things as far as consultations, as far as, far as starting a men's group called the Power Circle, which is really my main focus right now. And what I'm about is just, I'm just trying to do my part to change the world. You know, I, I'm just trying to do my part that when I'm, when I'm, when I'm long gone, that, that I, I know that I left a mark on this planet. So that's, that's really what I'm about right now. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, if you had to pick a phrase that would describe the theme of your life, what would it be? Uh, the theme would be that a man must know who he is and he must know where he's going. That, that describes everything. That describes uh, my purpose. And I believe that should be the foundation of every man's purpose. Okay. That's, you said a man must. A man know. must know who he is and a man must know where he's going. Yes. That is fantastic. Um, yeah. So even though this wasn't planned in my script, I just can't let that go. So what happens when a man doesn't know who he is and where he's going? Well, what, what happens is he becomes what Napoleon Hill in, in the book Outwitting the Devil, he becomes a drifter. You know, he begin, he begins to fall under the uh, the trance of the world. Uh, he becomes he becomes a man that's not focused. He becomes a man that can't accomplish any goals. He becomes a man that's not that uh, that's not useful to his family. He becomes a man that struggles with his money, his time. You know, he, he, he's just a, a wanderer of the world. And I think, you know, there are many there are many disciplines we can put in place to avoid that. But but the foundation of it is if a man know, knows who, who he is and he knows where he's going, everything will stay in alignment. You've said a lot. I am so glad to hear you say that. One of the reasons I wanted to put together the, the Defining Moments platform was because I feel like there's not enough places that people can go to hear positive information coming from black men. And um, you said a word there. So I definitely will be putting your information um, in, in our, you know, information box for YouTube so that they can find you. I really admire the work you're doing, the messages you give and your content. And I highly recommend anybody and everybody to look at it, including women, because I think we can learn a lot from it. So um, it. a defining moment is a point in life when a pivotal decision must be made or when an experience fundamentally changes a person, what defining moment would you be willing to share with us today? Well, you know, I have a few moments in life that have, have shifted me uh, to, to become the man that I am today. But if I had to narrow that down to one defining moment, I would easily say it was, you know, when I went through my divorce, uh, just due to, you know, my, my complete, my life did a complete, you know, something different at that point. Um, and the reason is, is because, you know, when I think about it, the reason is because up until that point, I lived my life. It was all about everyone else. I, you know, I, I can go back to my childhood and my teenage years and my 20s when I got married. Like my whole life was dedicated to making sure everybody was, you know, around me was was happy, was satisfied. Of course, again, I say I was married. Uh, so it was all about my wife. Uh, growing up, it was all about my family and friends, even even my uh, community service, giving back to the homeless shelters and and helping building with ha a habitat of human uh, with humanity. It was just all about giving. And, but when I hit that bottom, when I hit when I hit, when I when I went through my divorce, uh, and of course lost everything, um, I saw that really I had been I should have been putting more focus on myself. You know. Um, and, and the odd thing is, the, the reason I say that was the most defining moment is because I believe there was something spiritual taking place. You have to understand, I got divorced. I signed my divorce papers one day and lost my job on the exact same day. So even though so 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 much was taking place, I, I, looking back, I understand that it was a a spiritual transformation. Like the person, the person that you see today couldn't have existed without that taking place. So 
it, it was just a you know a defining moment where I had to start seeing the world different. My, my relationship with the world completely different. So was that because you found okay, I'm I don't have a wife anymore. So was the divorce it, or was it was it the actual divorce? Well, it, it was just that period in life that, okay. that you know. And when I say period, I'm talking about a very narrow window of about a two week span. And let me just start from, start from the beginning. Like, like you have to understand that not only did I, did I get divorced, so that, that was a part of it. Not only did I lose my, you know, uh, almost lose my house and cars and all this stuff, lose my job. But what it, the, the road that it took me down was, and this is why this is why I, I ended up being as far as my low spot. I just, I just, and this is the thing, you know, when, when a person now as, a, as an adult, when a person takes their own life, I understand it now. You know, I, I got to the point where I no longer wanted to live. And before that, I always thought that people that 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 even considered that were cowards. But now I understand that that what, what a person is going through when everything has been taken from them, and they're just tired of playing the game. They're, they're just tired of playing the game of life. And when I say everything, everything, you know, those my defining moment because I got to the point where I was just tired of playing the game of life. But the beautiful thing about that is, you know, once I lost everything, it took me back to, you know, what I call a ground zero. You know, everything I had learned, everything I thought, all my beliefs were pretty much wiped out. So now I was in a position to learn everything brand new. So so that was the blessing of it. So that defining moment helped to give you a, a jump start to saying, I have to recreate myself, my yes. thinking, and, and, everything. And it, wiped, it wiped my slate clean, everything clean. Hmm. So what experience or what happened as a result? So what did you start doing differently? Obviously you weren't married and then you said you lost your job. So I'm kind of curious about this was whatever was happening that led to the divorce. Did that have to do with your job as well? Or no. did it just coincidentally happen on the same day? Just coincident. And, and, and this is the thing. And this is, you know, now what I understand, like I, I saw myself like like my ultimate goal, my desires, I'll say the last three years before my divorce, my, my desires were to live a life that I live now. I, I wanted I wanted to touch uh, uh, other men. I wanted to have a closer uh, relationship with source energy, with God. And, and that just became my movement. So I, looking back, I understand now that me, me going through a divorce, me losing my job was, was all part of this new vision that I that I had for myself. And I always tell brothers. I always tell people that, you know, when you create a new life, that old life has to fall away. Like, like, like both worlds can't exist at the same time. So, so both of those things, me losing my job, me getting divorced, all happening with that, that same time period. I understand now that it was just me moving in a different energy, you know? Hmm. Okay. So can you tell us, um, what are some things that changed in terms of your actual physical world? Um, because you talked a lot about the spiritual and your, and your mindset. So what are a few things that you started doing differently as a result of what happened? Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you this, like the, the day after, you know, when things started to clear up, when I began to, you know, see the light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. I was going to, because I was in a position where I didn't have any electricity at home. I was, I was driving to a Starbucks to use the internet. I was getting ready to find another job, right? And I heard, I heard, uh, I was listening to XM radio. I can't believe, I can't remember what station it was, but they quoted, a, a, they quoted a, a, a piece of James Allen's book, As a Man Thinker. Yes. And the, the, the quote that stuck in my head, I, I say it all the time, where it says, man does not attract what he wants. Man attracts what he is. And, and it's crazy. When I, when I heard that, I had to pull over and just absorb that. And instead of going to the Starbucks, I turned around because I said, you know what? I think I have this book at home. I went home. Of course, no lights at home. And I'm going through my closet and I find this book and I sit down on the floor and, and I read it and it changed everything. And after just sitting in that energy for two or three days, I understood that everything that had just happened, I had created. So, so the power in that is saying, you know what? If I created this, then I have the power to create anything. Mm -hmm. So for the next, the next, I'll say week or two. I just redefined myself. Uh, didn't, didn't talk. Didn't have any phone calls. No, no outside. Didn't, didn't go anywhere. I just focused on building myself. And from that point forward, you know, I'll say that over the next 90, 120 days, my life just started doing some doing some major things. So, as far as how my physical world started to uh, started to change, before that, I never saw myself as an entrepreneur. 
So, so going from sitting in a house, no lights, no furniture, uh, 90 days, 120 days after that, I owned my first business, which was a straight path truck, started my own trucking business. And from there, things just started to evolve. Okay. Excuse me. So you had no lights, you had no whatever, and then you start a business. Yes. I, I'm saying I went from one day I had, I was getting foreclosure letters, uh, okay. reposition letters on my truck, uh, couldn't pay any bills. My lights were out. I was pawning the, the last pieces of furniture in my house just to eat. I can remember, I can remember one day having a glass of tap water and a Snickers bar for dinner. And, and that's when I was at my lowest. And, and in 90 to 120 days from there, I had my first truck, my trailer, my own authority, operate my own own trucking business, which grew for the next you know couple of years. So so it, it's that quick. And when I say that, that's really what I harp on when I tell people about about evolving as a man. I say you have to stop looking at it as as evolving over time, thinking that everything has to be long term. It, it all starts with the internal switch. It's like either it's on or it's off. To to think that you can go from ground zero, to think that you have to go from ground zero to you know, uh, uh, being successful, whatever that looks like, it, it's not a progression. It's it's an instant switch in a man. And that time frame, you know, you can shrink that down, you know, dramatically by moving like that. Wow. Um, I have so many thoughts. And I, mm -hmm. I think, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to do these um, this series is because I want people to actually learn from you. Uh, I know at a time when I was growing up, you know, we had not only was my dad at the house, but we had neighbors, you know, male neighbors up and down the streets. And so if somebody needed their bicycle fixed or they needed their car worked on or, you know, one of the, you know, single mothers in the neighborhood needed some the grass done or to borrow a lawnmower. There were families and there were men in the neighborhoods. And I feel like that's one of the big societal changes right now. We don't have a male presence or a not even just a male presence, but a man's presence in so many um, aspects of life. And I feel like it's time for us to get back to mm -hmm. uh, family. Yeah. And that doesn't have to be blood, right? That get We need to get back to friendship and connection. Mm -hmm. So if you were to give three pieces of advice mm -hmm. to your younger self at that defining moment time, what would you do? So it could be leading up to it. Because mm -hmm. it's because and the only reason I want to say this, I want to preface this, mm -hmm. because things actually went better for you as a result. Mm. At the same time, you might go back and say, well, if I had done it differently, you said it's, it's you, you own what happened. But if you had done things differently, could you still have it all? Could you still have that marriage and have what you have now? I don't know. So what are three pieces of advice you would give to your younger mm. self? And you can pick that time and tell us what they would be and why. Well, well the first one is hands down. Uh, keep Keep faith in God. Like whatever you whatever you call that source energy, God, you know, and there are a million other names. But like regardless of what you see going on around you, like we have to we have to keep faith in, in that energy. And I always say I always say that the thing that made the messenger or Jesus who he was, was, you know, he had the ability to operate and roam in this third dimensional world, but think with his spiritual mind at all times. So I think regardless of what we're going through, the good and the bad times, like like it's imperative to stay plugged in, to stay plugged in. Because if you don't, once you have these assets and these homes and these cars and these whatever else relationships, if they happen to go, if your foundation is based on those things, then your energy goes down with it. Mm -hmm. but, but if you plug in the source, then you stay on solid ground. You know what I mean? So that's the first thing. Stay, stay connected to source energy. Okay. The second thing is. A man's purpose must be over everything. And, and when I say that, I really want to narrow that down to like men in relationships. Like, like I wish I would have known that I wasn't built for, I wasn't ready for marriage at the time that I got married. Okay. Like, I understand now that a relationship can't even do the right thing if a man isn't plugged into his purpose. Like, like he doesn't even have a space for a woman in his life if he isn't tied in a purpose. Uh, so, so as far as far as purpose in relationships, I wish I would have known that um, back then. Uh, keep purpose over everything, and that go and that that goes back to a man, uh, 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 you know, avoid avoiding drifting and that, and that whole conversation. And the third thing, the third thing I would say is to you know keep your life in a bubble. And I talk about this all the time. You know, we we all live in this same world. But a man must create a world 
within this world. And what I mean by that is a man, a man needs to formulate his own thoughts, his own beliefs, his, his own way of, of just being, his own desires. And what I mean by that is if you're looking at social media to define what happiness is, mm-hmm. I mean, you, you're, on, you're, on a, you're on a race that's never going to end. You're, you're, on a, you're on a chase for fulfillment that you'll never catch. So, mm-hmm. so when I say keep, keep a man should, or a person should keep themselves in a bubble, you know, just uh, define your own world, define your own happiness. You know, only purchase things that you like, only go places and go to restaurants. Whatever, whatever you do, do it based strictly on what what you like doing, as opposed to what the world is saying you should do. Okay, that's great. Okay, so based on that, um, yes. could you give? one it can be one or two pieces of advice you don't i don't want to limit you but if if there's a man right now and he finds himself in a relationship especially a marriage mm-hmm. um what would you tell and he knows he's not necessarily ready what would you tell him to do would it be to get connected work on your purpose though you're married and start to begin to formulate your own mm-hmm. desires and then commun- and while communicating with your partner so you can try to stay together? I mean, I don't know, because as a woman, I'm I'm hearing all this and I'm worried. Like, yeah. Well, I, well I'll say this. I, I believe I believe that that marriage is a holy union. I believe that. So I don't believe that, you know, I believe when two people get married, then it, sh- they sh- it should be taken serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that if a man is in a marriage and he finds out, hey, you know what? I've been moving wrong. Like I need I need to tap into my purpose. I think the first thing he needs to do is is do that. And to be honest, when, when you're talking about a man tapping into his purpose, it's really all about first aligning the hierarchy. M- meaning, meaning, because a lot of marriages, a lot of men put women over them and, and, and think women other, but a man must first tie in the source energy and tie to his purpose and tie in the self. That needs to be his priority. And then there's his wife, and then there's his his, his family, his kids, and, and you know, other relatives. But once he ties into that and finds his purpose and, and starts to go in that direction, if she really loves him, if she really trusts his leadership, she's going to be on board. And, and that, that's why I say it's important to find that purpose first, because you, you need to have that mission defined before a woman even comes on your team. Because that, that that's where that's where the that's where the, the divide can come. Mm-hmm. I just happen to be married once I I happen to be married once I started to even scratch the surface of my purpose. And once I started moving in a different direction, my wife was like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm not going there with you. So mm-hmm. so even though even though I'll say we both put that energy in to try to make it work, we understood that, hey, you know what? We're on two completely different paths. So that's why I say purpose must be over everything. I could have easily, and what most men do is just fall back into the that great area and say, you know what? I don't want any smoking life. I don't want to go through divorce. I know I'm going to lose all these things and I don't want to go through that. And they'll just they'll just fall back and start thinking like the common man and spend the rest of their lives miserable. But again, there's no fulfillment in living a life without purpose. And, and what a lot of people do is, and this is when I say a man must keep, and when I say a man, I mean humanity. When I say a man must keep his life in a bubble, what what a man will do is, if he isn't tied to his purpose, he begins to seek that fulfillment in everything else. Yes. He'll seek it in having a multitude of women. He'll seek it in having a garage full of cars, uh, 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 you know, more square, more square footage in his home. And, and you know, I, that's what I identified in my old self. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I, you know, I, I was a young man. I was, quote, unquote, successful. And, 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 and me purchasing all these things and homes and cars, what I was really what I was really looking for is that connection, mm-hmm. that, that real fulfillment. And it's no different than any other vice. You know, the, the person that's strung out on heroin is no different than the person that's that's strung out on getting likes on social media. It's mm-hmm. like they're all seeking the same thing. Something outside of themselves to find yeah. satisfaction and not fulfillment. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much for not only sharing your defining moment, mm-hmm. but helping to shape this conversation and because you are very unique to the to the men on the defining moment series, I definitely will um, be dropping your information because I would encourage men, especially and younger men, especially to go look at the Immortal Minds uh, channel on YouTube because you can find so much great wisdom and support in where you are. So that's my personal endorsement once again. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today. And as we're wrapping up, um, do you have any closing thoughts? 
Uh, I'll just say that that I'm grateful for what you're doing. Uh, you, know, you know, when people talk about finding their tribe, you know, as soon as, as, soon as I crossed your content, as soon as I saw you on, on social media, I knew that you and I were in the same tribe, meaning we have the same mission. You know, you can look at relationships, you can look at finances, you can look at health. You know, you know, you know, our people are are in a in a in a in a low vibrating situation, and it just feels good to cross someone's path that understands that and is trying to make it better. So I just want to close out with saying thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate what you said, and thank you for continuing to do what you're doing and being an example. And I look forward to us having a show together again, um, having an episode or two together, uh, because you said so many things that are not part of this series that we have to talk about. <laughs> so um, for those of you who are watching, thank you so much for watching today's segment of the Defining Moments series um, featuring Black men on The Authentic Joe Show. Take great care. Listen well love yourself first, and then figure out how to love others as well. I'm Jolena Johnson, and we'll see you next time.